Hello. How are how, how ours? How are everybody? How are they? How are you? I'm good. We're here together, so I'm great. You're still standing. So we are actually at this really beautiful, you kind of, maybe you can see a little glimpse of it. So as if any of you have been following for a little while, we do these Point to Get Out podcast retreats. Now, this is the sixth, I think this you said. This is the sixth, because this is our Crazy. third in Detroit. So we do spring in Detroit and fall in St. Louis. That's exactly right. And so it is spring, uh, as evidenced by our bright clothing. Um, and we are here in Detroit, right outside of Detroit, right? Right, Rose Point, Michigan. But guess what we forgot to do? This is my dear friend, Megan <laughs> Holmes. She so introduced ourselves. The Needlepoint Clubhouse. That's right. Davis. That's right. We are partners in crime in this crazy podcast. And I am Melissa McLeod, and I own the Roll in the Floss here in Gross Point, Michigan, which is just a stone's throw outside of Detroit. So there we go. And so I think what we're what we're running into here is that we're getting a little comfortable because we have been doing this for so long. And we make the assumption that maybe you have seen this before and you know exactly what we're up to. But welcome to those people who have not watched us before. Or listen, because now uh, we're on uh, yeah, well, the audio so podcast. back to that. So we are at a we're at a is it a marina, Melissa? It's, so this is our city park. It's the Gross Point Farm City Park. And we have this beautiful, they call it the boathouse, but it's really like a, a banquet hall, really. Yeah. It's, but with this marina around us, in front of us, you guys can't see that, but it's playgrounds and there's a little beach and there's tennis courts and paddle tennis and, and all the things. So it's so great. Yeah. And inside these doors right here behind us, there are 60 women. 66. Wow. 66, 66 attendees. women. Yeah. I wish I could say men and women, but it is 66 stitchers uh, here who have traveled to Detroit area. And it's all because they wanted to try to have community and learn, listen, excuse me, meet each other and learn from each other. And uh, it's just awesome. So we have 23 states. Okay. We also have the District of Columbia and uh, Ontario represented amongst our stitchers. So cool. Yeah. And then are you, in the 66, are you counting the vendors as well? No, those are just retreat attendees. And then we have six vendors here this year. Sure, but we have five. We had a little like change up, which was good. Really fun. So as you might understand, what that means is that these vendors are here at this uh venue so the stitchers can interact with them and talk to them it's get, really get stitch ideas and thread color ideas and then in addition to that melissa's store is only about a five minute drive from here and so there's a shuttle bus taking people back and forth in case they want to pick up some new campuses and threads etc um but it's just it's really fun so your st her staff is really stretched thin this weekend because she's got people at the store and people here oh, and hands on deck. it's just really fun we had a fabulous i say fabulous because i didn't plan it at all um, <laughs> so i can say it was a fabulous party um last night at our shop in yes. the parking lot that's right a beautiful, beautiful weather. style dinner um, 58 degrees in Detroit in on April 19th is almost unheard of. So we were very, very fortunate. The stitching gods were shining down. <laughs> they were, they were. So it, it was really fun. And now we've got today stitching, tomorrow stitching, and Megan's going to film this podcast for us and bring on, we're going to introduce you to some of our stitchers here. Yeah. So every time we've had one of these retreats, we've um, done a lot. Well, we call it live, even though you'll be viewing it later today. But we've done some sort of an interview situation, um, and we've tried to come up with a theme. And what we're decided to do this time is that uh, we get a lot of questions about how much do people pack to go to a retreat? Do they actually get any stitching done? What are they stitching on? Who's stitching what, et cetera? So I have gone around and talked to some people about what they're stitching, and I have found a lot of people are stitching uh, the canvases that are being offered by the vendors that are here. But guess what we forgot so, to bring with us? We're going to have to pause this for a second. That may be right now, right. but we were going to show off all of our exclusives. Oh, I'm going to do that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. So to her point, though, we are going to kind of pause and come in and out. So it might be a little a little jagged when you watch this, but uh, we just wanted to introduce ourselves, tell you what we were doing here, and then I'm going to go grab some uh, friends that are here stitching, talk to you about what they're stitching on, talk about their experience here at the event, and then also show you some of the other exciting things that Melissa had organized for this event. So yep. um, so thanks for being here. And we're going to go grab our first group. Does that okay. cover it? That sounds good. Okay, okay. super. Thanks. Bye. We'll be right back. For now. <laughs>
Okay, you guys, I'm back. And I have two different faces with me. Uh, a second ago, I was with Melissa. And we introduced that we're here in Michigan for the Putting It Out podcast retreat. And two of my favorite people in the industry are here too. And the reason I grabbed the two of them is because, as I mentioned a second ago, they are vendors here at the podcast retreat, but they also have something extra special to share. So Heidi and Heidi, now what's the designer on this one? I'm sorry. I can't. Is it Kay? Kay. Okay. Kay. Okay. So um, both Heidi's artist, Kay, and Lauren from the Game of Stitchery's artist, uh, Chrissy, created uh, exclusive canvases that can be purchased um, here this weekend. And then if there are any leftovers, I think that they're then going to be available through the Wool and the Floss ongoing. So if you see something you're interested in, call, contact Melissa. But as you all might or might not know, through NDLPT Designs, um, Heidi is a big baker uh -huh. and loves her mixer. And so she has a whole series of these mixers. And I don't know if it was your idea or if it was Melissa's idea or. So I, I said, I asked her and she said, I said, so can we do a custom mixer? And she said, of course. So do you all see this? How stinking cute this is? It's cherries on the mixer. So if you have, again, been watching us for a minute, or if you know um, anything about the state of Michigan, you'll know that uh, Traverse City is the cherry capital. <laughs> I don't know, the country or the world. I guess it's the world. Um, and so anyway, what a brilliant idea. And then in addition to that, so Heidi stitched this. So show them, um, let's see. Okay, show the canvas. Okay, so here's what the canvas looks like and stitched. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. Isn't that adorable? I love the mint green. Oh, perfect idea. Thank you. So it's a little mixer with cherries on it. Isn't that cute? And then um, she stitched it and Heidi, Heidi actually personally stitched yes. this and did a stitch guide. And then, um, so I think you can, you can buy a, the stitch fully guide, kit. the fully kit. Okay, great. So, um, so this is just really darling. What a good idea to use the cherries. And then in addition to that, talk about this, Heidi. Melissa. So Melissa's custom acrylic maker made this frame and you see it better when I put the actual canvas in there because it slides in and the beauty of it has this little kickstand right here Cute. so it sits like this and you can have it actually in your kitchen and not have to worry about food getting on it. You know, I think it's so cute. And when I saw them pull this up, I was like, I wonder if there's a chance that that could hold a recipe. Oh, like, I wonder oh, if, if the magnet, yeah. if a magnet would, would to hold the recipe. I, like, right. I, I, I thought this might be a little tray here, but it's not. It's on the inside to hold the needle point and protect mm -hmm. the needle point. But what, what, wouldn't that be fun to somehow figure out a way to let, even, even if you use a little scotch tape to put your oh, yeah. recipe that you're working on, like, yeah. one in, and that way if you spill something on it, you could just wipe it right exactly. on. Anyway, it just gave me this kind of um, kitchen vibe. So so yours is absolutely darling. So good yeah. way to go, Heidi. So yep. that's that. Um, And then uh, let's talk about how this went down here. I think- Can you model? I think that, yeah, that'd be great that model. Um, so Melissa decided that she wanted to have as part of the gift, the swag, uh, this exclusive palette. So we're yep, going to show that. Palette. So silk road fiber. Yeah, so good. Fired by Lily Pulitzer colors. And you know, we all love silk road fiber so much. So, so I, hold on one second. Yeah. I continue to forget that we are also on an audio podcast now. So what we're going to oh, do is yeah. just describe this just a tiny bit. So the silk road fibers colors are this sort of pretty aqua kind of like a purpley periwinkle, um, a bright blue, a hot pink, and a lime. And when you kind of look at it all together, it's of course giving you this kind of preppy lily inspiration. Yes. So um, Melissa came to Lauren at the Gingham Stitchery and said, hey, I'd also like for you to create an exclusive design. And so go ahead. So yeah, so Chrissy, um, our, our designer, Chrissy Johnson, um, I kind of put this bug in her ear and she, as she does, I call her a robot sparkle unicorn because she... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she does things instantly and to perfection in a way only a robot can um but she's amazing and so she came up with not one but three designs so the first one was this one sure and by the one. way um she so she's going to show this but the bag there's a bag that these are attached to yeah. so we, we designed these as bag right. tags and um uh the the gift like part of the swag in addition to the card was this kind of brightly colored leather um kind of I don't know what do you call this a purse a tote yeah. um and so go ahead I didn't mean to interrupt you yeah so they so um Chrissy designed this one which is based on a classic Lily print and we called it the Gross Point Boats and of course in true Chrissy fashion she um designed um an alphabet so you can just put one initial in here and she also provided these letters so you could do the retreat or again you could just put your alphabet so she designed that the Gross Rose Point Boats. Then she also designed this one, which is um, called the Roses on Teal. And again, she designed a big one-letter font to put on there. 
And then last but not least, she also designed, I'm going to think this one we called the, um, oopsie daisy, is this the beach? This one? is the party coral. Thank you, Heidi. Mm -hmm. The party coral, which is all of the colors. It's they, great. They're and yummy. I know they're all kind of inspired by these palette colors. So she kind of took some classic lily prints, like her take on classic lily prints, um, to go with the palette. So we we did what you know. What's better than one exclusive canvas is three. So and then and then Lauren had to be a double show off. And uh, look at her nails. Her nails are match <laughs> the palette. Stop it. So Lauren has a bright pink nails that are going with the whole theme here. So, so you guys, uh, just a quick hot take. So this is probably both of your first Pointing It Out podcast retreats. My first one in Detroit. I've been to quite a few with the Native Point That's podcast. right. That's yeah. right. So what, how do you feel about this? Is this like, isn't it cool to have this backdrop? And oh my God. I've been telling everyone, like, I'm like a water girl. Like my happy place is the water. So looking at this view is amazing. Yeah. It's a great view. And I mean, all the ladies are having such a fun time and it's fun. It's fun for me to be able to actually walk around and see what everybody's stitching and everybody's having a good time. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's fabulous. And finally meet people who we've been talking to for years yeah. in person, which yeah. is very, very fun. Yeah, I agree with that. Me too. So um, Heidi just gave me the perfect segue. So I wanted you all to see these exclusive designs that are now available through the wool and the floss out of this retreat. But next, what we're going to do is talk to some people about what they're stitching. And um, you might see a little coordination between the vendors and the people, what they're stitching. So, you know, yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I like a good theme. So, yeah. all right. Well, I will be right back with some more friends to talk about what they're stitching. All right, y'all, I'm back just once again here, and I have a new friend, Molly. Molly is from New Jersey, and Molly, you traveled here with a friend, uh, Josephine, correct? Correct. Okay, good. And it's your first time to a retreat or first time to a Pointing It Out podcast retreat? Uh, first time to any retreat. All right. So what do you think so far? Oh, this is the funnest thing I've done um, in years. Good, 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 good. That's what we want to hear. Um, By the way, I, got, I took my sweater off. These girls are making me hot. Um, <laughs> Um, so Molly, I observed Molly doing some stitching and I don't want to be too self-serving because we actually intended for her to share one artist that she's stitching on, but I'm going to show you the other one that she's got too. So, um, first of all, show them the one you have on top there, Molly. So as a reminder, we also are on an uh, audio platform. So I'm going to describe what she's holding. So for those of you who are watching, you may or may not recognize this canvas. It comes out of the gingham stitchery. Once again, sorry not to be self-serving, but um, Molly happened to be stitching this. And um, one thing that came out of today is that she was trying to figure out what background to do. And Lauren and I both looked at that and said, oh, we think skip, skip tent. What do you think? I love it. It's going good. So once again, we love to say skip, skip tent uh, at the Needlepoint Clubhouse. We don't really know if that stitch has a name, but we like to call it skip, skip tent. Well, she looked it up and sent it to my cell phone and it is called skip, skip tent. Well, we, we charted that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm sure like, Mary from Mary's Whimsical Stitches probably knows, or somebody who's like way more familiar with stitches <laughs> knows. But the point is it's a skip tent and then skip a line and skip tent and skip a line. So um, it's working well for that canvas. And it's turning out darling. Um, but then show us what else you have here in your stash. Thing. Well, I happen to have a favorite designer. Um, I I met Tina Griffin through my local needle point store and a um, trunk show. And the first canvas I bought was this. Oh, so this is this triangu triangular Christmas tree. Are you going to finish this as a stand-up? It's going to be finished as a stand-up. Oh it's gosh. 13 count. It stitches deliciously. If you're looking on Tina's website for this particular canvas, it is painted with red, a bright oh. red. So don't let that deter you. Um, my daughter wanted it in green. So I did the color change. It's beautiful. So um, so, so now you've now done, you're, you're working on the triangular. So, okay, sorry, go ahead. So we switched holidays <laughs> to this beautiful 13 count Easter egg. So it's very easy to stitch. It's a pretty... It's really, it's, they're just delightful to stitch. They're fun, they're um, colorful, they're painted exquisitely. And Molly has used all basket weave stitch, it appears. Yep. And, uh, but she's got some glitter in there. And so there is no shame in the tent stitch game. I hate to say that to you people who love um, lots of different stitches, but these are beautiful. And will this one also be a stand up? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So I believe you probably brought these so that you could turn them into the wool and floss for finishing. Yes, right about that. Very yes, good. Because, because their finishing is 
They do a great job. Great Second job. to none, indeed. Um, and so uh, show us the last one that you're stitching on. So this one I'm actually working on now. So this is the candy corn. So it's triangular form also. And for those people who are listening, so Tina has these designs that almost have kind of stripes of design. Um, so they've got, I don't know, like like the egg has chicks and um, and carrots. And then the Christmas tree has lights and trees and candy canes. And it's just really, really darling. So now you're looking at the candy corn. I call it candy cane. Candy, candy corn. corn. Um, and it's got stripes of ghosts and cats and pumpkins. And then at the top, it's got some witch's feet hang, uh, uh, sticking out. So really, really fun. I got to tell you though, girl, you need a new needle minder. Uh, that one doesn't coordinate. What the heck? You've got such cute things here all coordinating. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Molly. I, I I am a little compulsive and I do coordinate my needle minders to my canvas. But when I was leaving, I grabbed this canvas as a last thought and the needle minder just happened to be laying on the table. So I grabbed it. <laughs> I, I know that this is audio and visual, but the ghosts I'm going to do in glow in the dark. And I think the witch's skirt is glow in the dark. So fun. So there's going to be a variety of threads. And I mostly basket weave or continental. Um, but for you more creative stitchers, the space and the and the the canvas is there. Yeah, it's awesome. So how did it feel? Or have you met Tina before? So I volunteer and coordinate trunk shows for my local needlepoint store in New Jersey. Which is Threads 2? Threads 2 in Fairhaven, New Jersey. Um, just because I'm kind of type A and everything has to be checked. And, Listen, and every needlepoint shop owner wants a type A uh, helper. Yes, Let's just so, say that. so I am that. And Tina's trunk show came and I happened to have to call to ask her a question. And she was, oh my gosh, the nicest per. I, so let me, let me put the asterisks on this. 99.9% .9 of the people I meet in needlepoint I have our nice people. I yes. have 20 yes. new best friends yes. this weekend. Yes. Awesome. Um, but she seems to be a very, very special person and very just down to earth and loving. And she's pretty new to selling her canvases. And I like fun holiday. I do a lot of Halloween and holiday. And it just, we just clicked personality wise. So you clicked over the phone. And so how does it feel to have met her this weekend? Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, it was like meeting it was like meeting Taylor Swift oh. if I was 25 years old. I she's just a wonderful, delightful person. And but that's not to say that every designer that I've talked to, you know, Joanna from um Plum Stitchery, I, I, she's a lovely human for sure. And, and and to your point, these are all wonderful people. I'm kind of wondering if you got any inspiration talking to her or if she got any inspiration from you. Like, did you say, hey, I have an idea or no, I'm I didn't do that. No? I, okay. I didn't do okay. that. Um, I did purchase um, she does another Christmas tree with an uh, with a pale blue background. Oh. I did purchase that one. So you too. got sucked in. And you added to your Tina Griffin collection. Yes, I did. And she does, she does just a wonderful thing. She really does a good job. So and I have to say they are they are painted beautifully yeah. and they're a great price point. Yes, I agree with that. And the 13 count mesh helps too. So it does. And for your for people who want more complicated, all of these designs are done in an 18 count. Oh, they're just a smaller. That's right. Every, all three of the designs that we showed come in an 18 count. They're just a little bit smaller. It's the exact same design. Awesome. So Molly, is it safe to say that you're going to continue to stitch Tina Griffin canvases? Yes. And is it also safe to say that you would enjoy going to another pointing out podcast retreat or some other retreat? As soon as you put that <laughs> wrap up, my <laughs> name is going into it. Good. That's good to hear. I mean, uh, the, one of the number one reasons we started this podcast was to try to build some sort of community, some sense of community. Uh, it was out of the, the, torturous COVID shutdown and we were all alone and we were trying to create a sense of community electronically and virtually. And I think it is still continuing in person now. And it's just been a great joy for all of us. I have to tell you, I was a little nervous coming to a retreat um, because I don't do a lot of decorative stitches and I was afraid that there would be judgment or this is 
I know that it, everyone is here by raffle lottery, but it is uh, every table you stop at or the people that stop at your table are smiling and laughing and complimentary and oh come to my table and look at what, what I'm, I'm doing. doing yes and yes yes it's, that's the joy of it it's 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 a beautiful setting mm -hmm. and um oh yeah as soon as that as soon as I know that raffles up my name's going in <laughs> and I want to do one little last thing for Molly so Molly says that her local needlepoint stores threads too in Correct. New Jersey but she also spends a little bit of time at another needlepoint store children who are what do we call it fighting spiders nope just spiders just the spiders okay so spiders at uh Rich so, University yes. of Richmond I had two daughters that sequentially played lacrosse at the University of Richmond so I used to spend 15 or 16 weekends a year in Richmond and you know student athletes if you're familiar with that are really busy so I found a local needlepoint store and my daughter is finishing her second the last daughter to go there is finishing her last year and although she doesn't stitch she is an artist so color and Whoa. shading is awesome. she's impeccable at that so my daughter now works at the stitching studio in Richmond. With Kathy, with, our friend Kathy. With Kathy, and I spend a lot of time there. <laughs> so if you're in Richmond, or if you're ever at Threads 2, look for Molly, say hello, and um, I guess that's it for Molly, right? Maybe Anything else? No, it's been delightful talking to you. <laughs> oh, good. This is a lot of fun. All right, we're going to pause again, and we're going to go find another friend. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, I am back again with my friend Ellen from Hingham, Mass. Is that what you say out there? Yeah. Hingham, Mass. So uh, I had a chance to talk to Ellen a little bit earlier, and she shared with me that she's a friend of Allison Sheffield. And that is my like fangirl moment. I cannot <laughs> wait to meet her someday. Um, but so that was our entree into conversation. But then we kind of continued by talking about what you're stitching and how you got into it. And um, I appreciated Ellen shared with me that she kind of used the podcast as as a bit of an outlet during sort of a tough time with her with her parents. So we are glad that you use the podcast for that, but we're even gladder that you're here. So Ellen is here. Is this your first retreat that you've been it to? It is. Yeah. Oh my my first time. yeah. So first time at any podcast or any retreat, not just any podcast. Right. 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 So how do you, what do you think about it so I far? I love it. Isn't I it love fun? it. It's really fun. I like meeting all the different women, seeing what people are stitching. And you, did you come here by yourself? I did. Okay. Yep. So I would say that there are, I mean, anecdotally, at least a dozen, maybe more, 15 women who are here on their own. And I want to just bring that up because I don't want people to feel, feel scared to do that. Oh, no, no. It's very easy. You have to put yourself out a little bit, sure. but it's really easy. People are so welcoming and yeah. And we've, um, we have, what we, what we typically do in these situations is we try to put some people together who are here by themselves so that they can all kind of form their own little cohort. Yep. Um, but you are sitting with some friends that you've never known. Have you known anyone before, no, even from Instagram? No, oh my goodness. No, no, no completely new. No. Super. No. I love it. So um, Ellen is stitching. Can you show me what you've got sure. here? So Ellen is stitching a piece from, um, it's out of the Plum Stitchery mm -hmm. and it's um, from Janet Blyberg. And we lovingly joke about this cake that we say, do you ever watch the finishing forecast that I do at my no, school? No, I haven't been able to watch So that. the finishing forecast, we joke, it wouldn't be a finishing forecast without a wedding cake because okay. we finished this wedding cake over and over and over again. But this, this little wedding cake is the wedding cake that could, I think it's a great seller for Janet and for Joanna mm -hmm. at the Plumstead Tree. Yeah. So have you had a chance to talk to Joanna at all? Today? No, I haven't. I've been meaning to get over there because yeah, I love Plumstead Tree. You need yeah. to. Yeah. And so I think that's um, something that's interesting is there is a lot going on inside this building. There, oh, tons. And I think what I may do is take my computer in in just a second to kind of give people a feel for what's oh, you going should. on. Oh, you should. Um, but it's, there's, vendors and there's there's stitchers and there's yep. just a lot happening and so you haven't even had a chance to get across to the other side of the room to talk to Joanna no I, I've been trying to keep my eye out and see when people are free to talk yeah. to so, <laughs> so okay. other observations that you've made from being at a retreat tell me 
I I was just so pleasantly surprised and I just I feel very much at home and good. people are very welcoming and open and very good I you know don't feel awkward at all so. have you gotten any inspiration like have you walked by and said oh I've always wanted to stitch that and yeah have yeah. you yeah and the other people are like buying canvas and like oh I saw that I really want that or what are you doing with this so yeah, yeah. and so that's another thing so what I was saying about when we were doing this podcast is we kind of try to find a theme to talk to people about and so we're talking about what are you stitching but I haven't asked anybody yet what did you pack to stitch was that a process for you oh it was it was so much fun because okay. um I had just finished a project and like oh this is great and I knew that this was sort of next on my list and I packed a whole bunch and it was just really fun to spend it took me a couple nights to get everything together. together but that that was part of the fun part is is packing for this retreat sure so yeah. how many projects did you end up bringing I brought three okay and how do you feel about that do you think that was a good choice or oh yeah it's definitely it was a very good choice Perfect. yeah so you yeah. got three yeah. projects rather yeah. small so you can yeah did you bring I didn't notice did you bring your sand I or, did or did not switch? I okay. did not but I uh so I know Anne from uh, so I've worked a lot with Anne from Wool in the Floss so okay. she lent me her stand gotcha so exactly. there are a lot of people I'll walk through in a minute but there are a lot of people using table stands oh yeah. I haven't seen yeah. any floor stands but people no. have lights and they've just kind of brought whatever they're comfortable with stitching and... yep I brought a light a clip-on light so yeah and that's worked okay. out well it works out great mm -hmm. well thank you for being here and thank you for sharing with us your yeah. stitching and um you My said pleasure. Your daughter getting married? Yes, my daughter's okay. getting married in September. All so. right, so that's what this yeah. is for. So exactly. very good. All right. Well, so thank you, Megan. Well, and absolutely, and I'll be back with some more. Okay, you guys, you know how I am. I'm going to do something a little crazy now. I've never done this before. So it might make some people sick. So divert your attention if you're watching on video. But if you're watching on audio, I'm gonna, what I'm doing is I'm going to walk into this room you might want to actually jump on over to YouTube to see this because what I'm going to show you is kind of how we have things set up here at the Pointing It Out Podcast Retreat. So here are Melissa's um, a gals. Oh, and a friend Julie over here. So this is what we're doing, calling like the, the checkout counter. Behind me are some of the wool and the floss wares here. And then as you can see, it's a whole room full of people stitching. Um, I think Melissa knew I was coming because she chose my favorite color to put on the tablecloth. So that beautiful chartreuse color is all over and it kind of goes with that preppy theme. Um, and we've got friends here and um, let's see, I'm gonna wander over here and then I'm gonna kind of show you. So you've got um, Lisa Ferguson is here today taking orders from Melissa's uh, store for um, custom work. We've got uh, Kirsty here taking finishing orders. Over here, you'll see Tina and Lauren Block. Say hi, guys. So we showed some of Tina's things, um, but we have not shown anything from Lauren. So Lauren is here and she's got, um, she has, oops, I thought it was open to the page. Give me a second. Remember that darling 12 days of needlepoint that I was gifted? Where are those, Lauren? I'm missing it. There they are. So she has those here. You know how much I love the 12 days of needlepoint that I was gifted by that beautiful group of retreatants in January. Um, so as I turn around here, I've got a group of stitchers who have actually been to our retreat before. But these gals, you guys are stitching some things together, aren't you? Look, so this is Janet, there's Melissa hanging out saying hi but um look at so these guys are stitching the plum stitchery tiger together right isn't that what you've got right there this plum stitchery tiger yeah so what i love about this is they've decided to stitch these things together and then they brought them here to the retreat to sit and stitch together so there we've got the plum stitchery um that's the dana minky uh tiger i think is how that gibson dana gibson dana minky and dana gibson they get me every time um, but I also think I just showed you those 12 days of needlepoint and I think these gals are all three stitching that too. Sandy, are you in on that mix too? But look at, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a gathering of needle pointers if there weren't a JCB wedding cake. There's another one. Like I said, we see those all the time and it's really, really fun. Um, I'm going to come wander over here. So Needlepoint Clubhouse has a little, uh, store here going on with Stephanie. We've got some friends here Sharon from St. Louis we've got some friends over here stitching mother and daughter I love when mothers and daughters come to join us say hi ladies I didn't ask anyone's permission if I could do this or not but you know why not 
Um, we've got some other friends. These gals here. So right here is where Victoria Whitson is selling her things. Um, she's not standing there right now, but Victoria Whitson. Oh, there she is. Uh oh, she's helping clean. She's the cleanup crew right now. So there's Vicky. Say we hello. Are. Hi to everybody. And so what I what I was saying is you're here selling your uh, uh jewels, your your trinkets, your yes. point trinkets. Yes. But also Vicky and I are, are partners because I just acquired the Susan Roberts needlepoint line, and Vicky has Liz. Tapestry Tan. Dylan. I never know yeah. how to say it properly. This good Rick Dylan. Good Rick. Sorry. So we just call it Liz and her daughter Ashley. And so and she's got to be on the table behind us. Who Susan used to represent. That's exactly so. right. So we have kind of um divided and conquered the Susan Roberts uh we hope. Empire. We hope. <laughs> we hope. All right, yes, we're gonna continue to try to conquer it, yeah. right? Anyway, Hi. and what I wanted to show you is that these gals here, I see some, I see some Vicky Whitson necklaces. Ladies, are you wearing your pearls? Do you mind sharing it on the podcast? You see these gals here have their pearls. All right. So Vic, Vicky, Victoria Whitson jewels are everywhere. We've also got uh, Joanna over here in the corner. Just say hi, chicks. And then we've got um, more friends stitching here. Look at that NDLPT sweater. Love that. That's our friend Kelly. Back to Lauren has this table here for Gang of Stitchery. And then we have Heidi over here with NDLPT Designs. And we've got some friends here. Now, this is a group that I was referring to. Sorry, guys, I didn't ask your permission, but I'm putting you on here anyway. You never know when we're when I've got a camera. So is this table full of people who came individually? Yeah, that's it. Don't you love that? I love that. So these gals all came from, one came from Ontario. And then, are you New York? Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia. Okay, New East Coast. So we've got Virginia. We've got, where are you ladies from? Texas. Texas. D.C. D.C., all right. And they all came alone. It is okay to attend one of these retreats alone. It is a lot of fun, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm forcing them to say that. Um. Anyway, and so other friends here. So I'm just kind of heading back around the room. Say hi. There's some food and drink here. So suffice it to say that this is a ton of fun. Hi, guys. Hello. So, um, so yeah, we've got everybody stitching. They're having a great time. Um, so I just want to encourage everybody to consider coming to one of these. It does not have to be the Pointing It Out podcast retreat. A lot of stores do them. Um, I just love, love, love how much community this brings to the needlepoint industry. And um, I think there's a lot of inspiration going here, a lot of sharing of notes and sharing of concepts. And it's just really great. So Melissa's done a great job. There's our friend. Oh, oh my goodness. Say hello, Amy. Amy Poor, the fame, the famous Amy. And our friend Kathy. So we are, uh, we are going to sign off now. We've had a, we're having a great weekend, right, Melissa? Uh, it's been a lot of fun. And um, thank you for indulging us. And if you ever have any questions about what anybody brings to a retreat, now you know a little bit of everything. So <laughs> take care, everybody. Thanks for being here with us.